Hello. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about the ArcGIS Viewer for Flex application. We're currently looking at the default configuration of the viewer. The viewer is a ready to deploy, configurable client application for services from ArcGIS Server and ArcGIS Online. It is built on the ArcGIS API for Flex 2.1 release. The system requirements for the viewer are simply a web browser with Adobe Flash Player installed, as well as web server software for you to host the application. If you want to enable the viewer to work with your own data, you will also need ArcGIS server software. The viewer is pre-configured with some services from ArcGIS.com and ArcGIS Online. Currently, we're looking at a streets-based map However, we could also switch to the topo base map or an aerial imagery base map. Under this More button, we can also turn on operational layers to show some additional information about our base map data if we wanted to. The viewer's navigation controls are located in the upper left-hand corner. In the lower left-hand corner, there's a map scale bar that changes dynamically as my view extent changes in my map display. In the lower right-hand corner, we have an overview map, which shows the current display extent relative to the spatial extent of the base map service. I'm going to turn off the operational layers and switch to the topo base map. I am going to close the overview map widget. At the top of the viewer application, we have the widget tray. Each one of these icons represents a shortcut to a widget, so some specific code that will execute functionality in the viewer. I'm going to activate the bookmarks widget which has some saved spatial extents. So for example I can go to the contiguous United States or Japan. Another widget that is included with the viewer is the GeoRSS widget. In this case this widget is hooked up to the viewer to show an RSS feed. In our example we have earthquakes. Notice we have two in Japan. If I hover over one of these icons, we can see an info pop-up window that displays more information about that returned record. And I can click on this hyperlink to open up a web page which shows more information from that GeoRSS feed. In this case, information from the USGS website. I'm going to close the GeoRSS widget, switch my base map to streets, and go back to the contiguous United States. Let's look at the locate widget next. This widget is hooked to a locator service and allows me to perform geocoding. I'm going to enter in a specific address that I want to perform geocoding on and as you will see it will retrieve that information for me. I click locate and it zooms me to a location. Now this address might become more familiar when I switch the base map to aerial view. To show some of the other widgets I'm going to switch the base map to streets and zoom to Louisville, Kentucky. A couple of widgets have been pre-configured to work with sample data for the city of Louisville, Kentucky. The first is a query widget. In this case, it's been pre-configured to find police stations in the city. I can hover my cursor over one of the returned records and an info pop-up window will appear about that record. There's also the search widget. In this case, it finds parcels for the city of Louisville. So I can select a graphical search tool and find parcels in the city. The parcels are returned, and if I zoom in to the returned records, I can hover my cursor over the feature to look at the parcel IDs. Lastly, we have a draw and measure tool. And this widget allows me to draw some simple graphics and text in my map display. In this case, I can draw a polygon around my returned parcel features. 
Next, let's look at the installation folder and footprint of the ArcGIS Viewer for Flex application. We're currently inside Windows Explorer looking at the Flex Viewer folder. It is currently located in the INET pub WW root directory of my machine, which is the Web Server Resources folder of Windows IIS. If I right click on the Flex Viewer folder and look at its properties, you can see that it's pretty small. It's about 6.2 megabytes. If I go into the folder, you'll see that I have two subfolders, Assets, which contains resources used by the viewer. The Widgets folder contains configuration and Swift files for my individual widgets. And if I go back to the main directory, I have several configuration files. These configuration files control what appears in my viewer application. It's a simple XML file which I will open, so I'm going to go into a program called TextPad and actually open that main application configuration file. In this case, config.xml. The config.xml file is the default configuration file for the viewer, and it can be subdivided into four main areas. The first contains general properties of the viewer, such as the viewer title, subtitle, logo, and style or appearance. The second section contains user interface elements, in other words, widgets that form the UI of the viewer. Here we have the navigation widget, the overview map widget, the map switcher widget, and the header controller widget forms the black banner at the top of the application. In the third part of the viewer configuration file is the map. Here we define the different data layers that appear. We have base maps, in this case streets, aerial, topo, and operational layers, in this case banners in places and fires. And the last part of the viewer configuration file is a widget container. This contains all the widgets that appear in the widget tray at the top of the application. Next, I'm going to show you how easy it is to make some changes to the viewer application to customize it for your own business needs. First, I'm going to change the title of the viewer and call it Petroleum Viewer. I will leave the subtitle as is and I will also change the logo and apply my own custom logo to the application. What I want to modify next is the viewer appearance as well as the initial view extent when the viewer application loads. I am going to go to the ArcGIS Viewer for Flex Resource Center. This is a resource center where you can download the ArcGIS Viewer for Flex application, look at some sample code, and get to the online help documentation under the Concepts tab. Here, I can open up the Configure the Viewer book and go to the Setting Styles document where we have some example styles. And what I'm going to do is copy the Sage Green tag and paste it into my config.xml file. And I'll delete that comment for black gold. I will go back to the online help documentation and click on the Extent Helper. The Extent Helper is a great little application built by the Flex dev team. It allows you to easily define the spatial extent or the minimum X and Y and maximum X and Y coordinates for a given view extent in your map display. Notice at the top of this little helper tool we have a map tag and also a bookmark tag. These can be easily copy pasted into your XML configuration files to define a spatial extent. In this case, I want to get the spatial extent for the state of Kansas. So I will highlight this map tag with its minimum and maximum x and y coordinate values. I will copy it and inside my config.xml file I will paste this information into the file. Now I will save my changes. Next, 
I will add some of my own custom data, in this case some petroleum data. As I mentioned earlier, we have two different types of layers inside the map. Base maps, which I won't touch, and also operational layers. In this case, I'm going to delete the fire's operational layer and call it petroleum fields. I'm going to delete the two info widget references and the next thing I have to add of course is a URL. This URL simply points to the service that is available. Specifically it refers to the REST services directory of an ArcGIS server installation. Now we're in Firefox and as you can see we're looking at a sample server provided by ESRI. I'm going to click the petroleum link to look at some petroleum data in this case some petroleum fields in Kansas. It's a feature service or a dynamic service and I have a chance to look at it inside ArcGIS.com as a published web map which I already have open in this tab. So what I want to do then is I will click the link to this layer and I can copy this URL address to this dynamic service and paste it inside my config.xml file and I will save the changes. Okay, let's look at the changes and how they've affected the ArcGIS Viewer for Flex application. I'm going to go back into my browser and here we're looking at the ArcGIS Viewer for Flex default configuration. I've already cleared the cache so what I'm going to do now is type in or retype in the URL for the viewer and reload it. As you will see, the changes that I've applied to the configuration file will now take into effect. I have my new title, my new logo, notice the border is now green, it's got that sage style appearance, and the viewer loaded to my new default spatial extent of the state of Kansas. I can also go to my more button and turn on the petroleum fields operational layer. And as you will see, the petroleum field data will load into my viewer application. In the last part of this video, what I'd like to do is show you how you can add a widget to the viewer. We're currently looking at the ArcGIS Viewer for Flex Resource Center. Here is where you can download the viewer as well as the source code for the viewer. We have some sample configurations at the bottom of this page. We also have help documentation underneath the concepts tab. There's also some information on all the core widgets that ship with the viewer. The, the viewer includes 20 core widgets. What I'd like to direct your attention to is the code gallery. The code gallery is where developers can submit their own custom developer sample widgets. There's also additional sample configurations for the viewer. What I'm going to do is click on the Elevation Profiles widget, specifically the Details link, which will take me to a page that gives you more information about the widget. A description telling you what it does, as well as a link to actually download the widget. I will click download to download the code gallery packet onto my machine and I will save it in a directory. Next, I will navigate to Windows Explorer and in the location where I downloaded the zip file I can double click on it and extract its contents. I will select all and extract the information to my temp directory. There's also a readme that talks about how you can use the elevation profile widget. I'm going to open the readme file for the elevation profile widget and a quick scan of this document indicates that I can get this compiled elevation profile widget working in my viewer with two easy steps. I simply copy this APL folder into the Flex Viewer installation directory and I edit my config XML file, in other words my viewer configuration file, and add this bit of code in my widget container. So that's what I'm going to do. Inside Windows Explorer, I will double click to open the compiled module of the Elevation Profile widget. I'll right click and copy this APL folder. Now I will take the APL folder which contains my Elevation Profile widget code bits 
and I will paste it into the Flex Viewer installation directory. This widget has been compiled, so I don't have to do anything to the code. Next, I go back to the README file and copy the XML code that references this widget, and I will paste it into my viewer configuration file, the config.xml file, and I'll save my changes. Now, I will go back into Firefox, and I will clear the cache. and reload the viewer application. Notice that we have a new widget in the widget tray. This is the elevation profile widget that I just added to the application. And what it does is it allows me to draw a line and it creates the surface profile of the line length. And as you can see, it is that easy to add a widget from the widget gallery. Thank you very much.